AI is not a techno machine god. It is not a panacea for all of humanity's problems. AI is a tool, but it is only useful when given the right information, the right context. For too long, search has been complicated to build and painful to scale. That changes today with Chroma Cloud. Search, that just works. I've been building software for over 15 years. And it seems like one of the most challenging parts to build great software is consistently the database. Databases are always getting my way. Whether it be painful migrations, scaling, or config, databases prevent me from focusing on what matters, my users. And it shouldn't be like this. When you think about great technology, great technology is that which fades into the background and gives me leverage to think about what really, truly is important. It's a lot like electricity. When you walk over to the wall and flip the switch, the power comes on, you don't have to think about it. And we think search deserves to be like this too. And for too long, search has been really hard. It's hard to set up and it's hard to scale. But that changes today. We are introducing Chroma Cloud. Chroma Cloud brings the developer experience that you've come to know and love about local Chroma to the cloud. It's fast, easy and reliable, and incredibly cost effective. We cannot wait to see what you build. To demonstrate this, I've got some mock data here on my laptop. So let's check it out. Chroma comes with a CLI that makes it really easy to work with your data. So we're going to type Chroma Browse dash dash local customer support messages. And here we can see uh, a bunch of questions that users have been asking. These are feature requests, issues, and just general support requests. These are great insights, but are currently here only on my laptop. But here's the really cool part. This doesn't have to live only on my laptop anymore. The CLI is already connected to my Chroma Cloud account. So first, I'm going to create a cloud database by typing Chroma DB create customer support. There we go. Now I'm going to copy the data. So I'm going to type Chroma copy to cloud all. This will move all data locally up to cloud. And it's done. That's it. Pretty cool, huh? Let's open it up in the dashboard and check it out. One thing we believe at Chroma is you must look at and understand your data. So we built the dashboard to be a powerful tool for exactly that purpose. We think you're going to love it. This is the collection I just uploaded. Looking at this collection, my eye is immediately drawn to this record, where this user is having trouble resetting their password. Now, looking at the dashboard, I also notice in the bottom right-hand corner that other users are having trouble with this. So let me click on search and see how large of a problem this is. Turns out there's a lot of users that are having trouble resetting their password. If this is a real application, we probably should look into this. Now, let's see what else Nicholas has been asking about. I'm going to find again the reset my password record, and I'm going to click on Nicholas. It looks like Nicholas has been asking about resetting his password, something about syncing with a particular version, and then something about a Slack integration. Cool. All right, let's explore what users are saying about pricing. We're going to go to tech search and type in price, and we get some results. Now, of course, users don't always use the word price. They might say billing or money or tiers. So let's switch to semantic search and see what else we can get. There we go. We're getting a lot more results now. Things about charges, things about renewals. This is much more useful. Now, I remember that Nicholas was also asking about versions. So let's use regex search built right into Chroma to find everywhere users mention a version. Now, I'm not great at writing regexes by hand, but I happen to have one here in the clipboard, so let's paste that in. Instantaneously, we can see all instances of versions across this entire data set. There we go. Great products come from great collaboration. When your entire team can create and iterate together, your team can now build, test, deploy, and scale with Chroma from development to production. We can't wait to see what you build. Chroma Cloud is 100% open source. We built Chroma Cloud on top of an open source architecture we call Distributed Chroma. You can read the code, so you don't have to take our word for what's real and what isn't. Bugs are caught faster by our open source community than they would be by just us alone. And you can ensure continuity of service by self-hosting Chroma at any time. 
Let's walk through the architecture through the perspective of a single request. And along the way, I'll highlight some of the key principles we used to build the system. Let's say we call collection.add, which is how you write a record to Chroma. It would first arrive at a gateway server, where we perform validation, authentication, quota management, rate limiting, and then forward the request to our log. Our log is the write-ahead log for Chroma. After a write is acknowledged by the log, it is considered durable on object storage, which is powered by 11 nines of durability. We call our object storage base log wall3, and it's completely open source. Because Chroma is built on top of object storage, it has to deal with the characteristics of object storage. Compared to SSDs, object storage has a substantially higher throughput, easily able to saturate a given node's network, but at the cost of substantially higher floor latencies. The log service works around this using a technique from the 1995 paper Lock-Free Linked Lists Using Compare and Swap. We keep two core data structures, a manifest and a set of slots we write to as log entries arrive. We first update the slot, and then we update the manifest using compare and swap primitives on object storage. If we update the slot, but we fail to update the manifest, the log service will repair on read. We keep a separate global log for queuing for later indexing. After writing to the global log, compactors are assigned work in order to build indexes and flush them to object storage. We use rendezvous hashing to assign work to various compactor nodes. If at any time the number of compactor nodes in the cluster increases or decreases, it could happen that two compactor nodes get assigned to the same work. In order to prevent both entries of work from being duplicated in the global view of the system, we leverage optimistic concurrency control via a transactional database we call the system database. After the compactor has successfully written to both object storage and the system database, we are ready to then serve reads using these optimized indexes. We build these optimized indexes over the various fields of a Chroma record. We use four different inverted indexing techniques. We first build a full text search index over the document using an inverted index of trigrams. We build a metadata key value index using an inverted index over the metadata key value pairs. We also build a vector index using the inverted indexing technique from Microsoft called span and spfresh. We also build a sparse vector inverted index and query it using the weak and block max technique. We use inverted indexes because they have a parallel access pattern compared to other algorithms that are sequential in their access pattern. This is better for object storage because as soon as a query comes in, we can massively in parallel get all of the data we need. That was the write path of the system. Now let's discuss the read path. When a read arrives on a gateway server, we use rendezvous hashing to assign it to a query node. We use a hashing scheme in order to deliver cache coherency for the SSDs we use to cache object storage data on query nodes. You'll notice that the read path and the write path of our system are isolated. This prevents aggressive writes from interfering with foreground reads. On the query node, when a read is being performed, we'll read data from the SSD cache, object storage, and then merge that with data from the log in order to deliver a strongly consistent read. The optimized indexes built by the compactor don't need to be entirely loaded at once into a query node. We support granular reads of these indexes so that cold loads are fast. The query execution engine on the query nodes is push-based and morsel-driven. This allows us to deal with multi-tenancy by taking advantage of the scheduling properties of a push-based system. Hopefully you now understand a little bit about both the write path and the read path of the system. Everything that I just mentioned is completely open source, so you can read the code, critique it, tell us what we should be doing better or maybe even submit a pull request yourself.